what I'd like to do now then is is sort of move on to the virtual hot seat. So this okay. is the part of the show for anyone that hasn't listened before, where um, we have a listener question that has um, sent in um, a challenge that they're currently facing or uh, they have an opportunity in front of them they want to maximize. So today's virtual hot seat question that Colin and I will have a bit of a brainstorm around and try and help them help them out is, I want our business to move from a service-based model to a consulting-based model. Now, the work we've done previously has always been around bringing a solution to a business and implementing it for them. And a big part of the value in offering my service is that these businesses, they don't have the time or desire necessarily to do the work themselves, but they need the result. And I'm a little bit concerned or slightly worried that this may well upset some of the existing clients that we have. And maybe some of our existing team isn't necessarily equipped with the right skill set to make this shift. So do you think this is a good direction to go or, uh, and if you do, is this a, uh, do you have any advice for making this kind of pivot? So what's the first impression of hearing that? I mean, obviously we don't have the the ability to qualify, but when you hear that, because you run a consultancy, did you ever do done for you services for people and then have to do the shift or has it always been a consultancy model? Um, We've actually been the so we've always we've always um, been the consultancy. So we do consultancy and training. Sixty um, percent of our stuff is is consultancy work. But I have to say the view that we've always taken, and this is um, th- this goes back to my experience in corporate life where I was employing consultants. Okay, was uh, and again you're like this because of the analogy. It's the it's the teaching the man to fish bit, okay. Mm. So when I was in corporate life, we used to have all of the big consultancies come in and uh, would come up with all these clever things, and then would want to implement this, would would like to do this to us, okay. And I didn't want them to do it to us. I wanted to learn how to do it, mm. okay. So what we did was, uh, and the way that we work is. And one of the differences, go back to what I said before about you know being different to other people. One of the things that we do is that when we go into a client, we we guide them. We don't mm. implement it for them. Okay. Mm. And we bring their team members into our team. And part of our selling point is we will we will work, they will work alongside us and they will gain skills transfer because they're working alongside us. So we can give them, say, like something like journey mapping. We Mm -hmm. will train them on our journey mapping that looks at those four areas, rational, emotional, subconscious, psychological. Um, And we will implement that. We will put them on a training course with us to start off with. But that group of people will work alongside us as we do the journey mapping. Why? Mm -hmm. Because there's lots of journeys. And, 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 you know, in my view, you shouldn't be trying to, you know, keep all of that, that intellectual property to yourself and go, no, if you do it again, you've got to use us and you've got to do it again, you use us. What I think that uh, the organizations want to do um, is they want to bring that knowledge in, in house. Okay. Uh, And, and then the way that we, the way that we, um, sort of monetize that for a future because you could argue you're cutting your nose off to spite your face by doing that is that we as our knowledge and everything improves then consequently we we change things so if i go back to this question you know one thing i've learned is there's definitions are always interesting you know so i don't really necessarily understand the 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 exact situation Mm. um but it it depend it, it depends on the market and where you're looking to go to. So if you think that there is more value to be gained from the organization by moving into this type of market where you're more consultancy, and it means that you are going to upset some of your customers, yeah, that's life, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, in fact, we've just literally, I was just approving a podcast that we did um, a couple of weeks ago uh, called uh, Firing Your Customers. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I'm not going to go off at a tangent, but it, it applies here is, 
you know, just because you've got this group of customers now doesn't necessarily mean to say that that's you, you need to have them and they're the, going to be the one that sustains you in 10 years time. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. So it could be that you have to move away from those customers. And that, that was going to be a point I wanted to sort of touch on as well is that it's, it's almost sort of thinking like what has led, cause we obviously don't know, but my, my sort of mind goes towards what's led to this shift. It could well be that, they are having the only way they can grow is by hiring additional staff, which, you know, impacts margin and, and all the rest of it. And then you've got the overhead and you have to continue to bring people on and all that kind of thing. So there's a bit of a fear element with rising overhead. You're going to have to keep the pipeline full and keep clients in and, and all the rest of it. So there's a bit of a fear element in there. Um, but I think that really it's about sort of asking yourself, okay, well, it's a little bit what, what you've been saying is like, what's valuable to you as the company? Like what's valuable to you as the owner of the business? Like, what do you enjoy doing? And, you know, is the model that you want to shift to going to actually support the way that you want to spend your day for a start? Um, yeah. And also asking yourself the question of the kind of clients you work with, are these the kind of clients I want to continue working with if they are not going to support my vision for my business? And if not, as you say, sell a V, it's, yeah. it's the way it is. It may well be that you have to shift your, target market it may well be you know you're going to have to shift everything because sure. I've, I've personally been through this transition you know I, I sort of left corporate world and started my own thing was a bit of a consultant doing strategy work for people and then I became a kind of an agency where we did a lot of the stuff for people and then I realized I was just a project manager and I didn't want to do that I actually wanted to be working with people. And I realized that I didn't want to be the single point of failure or have the, our businesses be the, the center point of failure, because if something happened, they have their uh, oxygen supply set, you know, cut off. And sure. I love the way that you said, you know, teach a man to fish, elite for a lifetime. That's one of the things that I now say, because it's like, I would rather empower people to be in control of their own growth destiny and their own whatever it is, destiny, than actually being reliant on somebody that could just turn around and say, I don't want to work with you anymore. See ya. Sure. Sure. I mean, that, that's, it's, it's that sort of thing. So, yeah, I so mean. It could be, it could be with this that, you know, it, it, it's as simple as the people that you're currently dealing with are the wrong people. The customers you're dealing with are the wrong people. You need to put your prices up. If, if the customers that you are putting your prices up don't like it, well, maybe they're the wrong customers then. Absolutely, because um, there's another yeah. way to increase and grow and scale. It's it's by yeah charging more, and then you yeah. free up resource. And if so, you're putting more resources in, then you know, and and this goes back to you know we all know that running your own business is tough. Okay, mm -hmm. you got to make tough choices, and a tough choice could be actually I think this market over here is more lucrative, and I need to move to this market, which means dropping out this group of of customers and they may not like it and that you may lose some customers. But if you think this market is more lucrative, then go for it. I mean, I think it's a question that obviously we can't answer 100% without the context, but it does have to be a question you answer for yourself at the end of the day. I think sure. they're at that sort of, you know, go, no go point And they're, you know, trying to work out whether or not this is the right thing. Ultimately, you're going to need to make that decision for yourself. But then I think practically what you need to do is consider what will the transition look like? Like, sure. how long do you anticipate that transition actually happening for? You know, you're not going to get it done in a week. I'll tell you that now. Sure. Realistically, here's the, here's you're the other question I would it. ask. Actually, it goes back to my uh, goes back to what, that book, "Who Moved My Cheese." What would you do if you weren't scared? So yes. the danger is the danger is that mixed up in this decision is is bloody hell, what happens if I lose all this revenue and everything else, which clearly, you know, but you've got to try to take that emotion out of it and go, well, what would I do if I wasn't scared about this? You know, what's the logical thing that steps that I would take? Love it. And, and some of the other things you could maybe do is just start scaling back some of the actual done for you services and run workshops with your clients to show them how to do some of the bits. Yeah, maybe it's that to partner with an outsourcer or a, a VA company, for example, yeah. and refer your client to them where you would train the VAs in, in your process yeah. and do it that way. Like there's, there's so many different ways of thinking about it that if you're worried about that side of things, well, well, the other side of things is if that does become the case, 
before you make that decision, go and find other people that do something similar to you and say, I'm about to probably fire at 80% of my clients. Sure. If but I was the, to pass them that around. Reminds me, that, that makes me think, as you were reading the question, um, my immediate reaction was, why is it black and white? Mm. Why can't you do both for a period of time? Yeah, yeah. it has to be um, a transition. Yeah. So, you know, be. yeah. So. Well, um, I hope that's helped. I think there's some, some, some food for thought, but ultimately I do think it's a decision that you're going to have to make on your own and you have to be prepared for there to be a transition. And you have to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Really, why am I doing this? And where is the value going to come from as a result of making the decision, yes or no? And what would I do if it didn't scare me? I think that is yep. a, a lovely one to sort of like end on there. So thank you very much for that one, Colin. I, I do think that there's a lot of things that um, that person can actually sort of implement and think about.